Katrina's Creations. This is episode 79, and I have a, a lot to share this week. Most of all, we have a new giveaway starting, which we will have more details about uh, later on in the video. If I sound a little hoarse, um, the pollen is like going crazy here on the East Coast, and my sinuses and allergies are doing its thing. So I don't feel bad or anything, but if my voice is a little grovelly, um, just please bear with me. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back each Saturday. If you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by, and please click the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And if you click the little notification bell next to it, you will get notified anytime I post a video. So let's get started because I've got a lot to share. My first thing, I have a finished object. I had mentioned last week that I was doing a test knit for one of the viewers. Uh, she's one of the subscribers. She's also one of my test knitters uh, for one of my shawls. And her name is Yoka. She lives in the Netherlands. And she has a pattern, and it actually just got released on Ravelry last, last night. I'm not sure how it works time-wise, whether it was last night for me, but it was the morning for her, I think. Um, anyway, it is called... Yarn Ball Buddy, and there's also, it's written in, in, it's written in Dutch and it's written in English. So, um, I will put a link down below to get you to that, um, the pattern page where you can download the pattern. It is a free pattern, so thank you, Yoka. Uh, this is what it looks like. And what this is, is like little pouches. It's, it comes in three different sizes. They're little pouches for holding your yarn. Um, now hers has little snaps on it, you'll see right here. I didn't have any snaps handy uh, when I did the test knit, so I actually put a drawstring in mine. But they are really cute as far as for holding balls of yarn, but they also would be great for like holding your phone or electronic gadgets, um, you know, hair accessories, all kinds of stuff you could use in these little pouches. So let me show you the one that I made. Now, I made it in a solid color. This is in the Coates and Clark Luster Sheen. So here you can see it's got like a little, little ribbed section with little eyelet kind of swirls that go down it. This is the large size, and it will hold a 100-gram ball. And here's a ball of yarn and... I'm not going to stuff it into here because this is a prize for one of the knit-alongs and I don't want to mess up, but this would fit inside here. Um, so I'll put the remains. This is what's left over of the yarn. This is about 25 grams, so that would really fit in here nicely. Like I said, this is the, this is the largest size, um, but the smaller sizes would even work great for, um, you know, change or anything. Uh, your telephone, anything like that. And then mine, I got a chance to use my eye coordinator. You can see it right here. This is my eye coordinator. Um, that's what it looks like in the center. There's four needles, and you fasten it on, and then you crank it. And I actually, I got this off of eBay for, it was $11 and some change. So, um, yeah. If I can find it, I will put the footage up where I demonstrated this. I'll stick it in the little eye card up top. Um, but anyway, this is the Yarn Ball Bunny by Yoka. And like I said, I will put the connection, uh, the link down below in the description box. If you click on that, it will take you to um, the design page where you can download the pattern. So, And it is free. So... Give it a try. If you've got leftover skeins of yarn, this would be an ideal way to use them up and be productive. And something that's really interesting with mine, because I did it with drawstring, my thought was if I put the ball of yarn in here and tie this loosely up top like that, I could actually slip it on my wrist, have the ball of yarn in here, and be knitting. So it's going to be perfect for car knitting, so the ball isn't going to go rolling around all over the car and underneath Dave's feet while he's trying to drive. So, yes. So, I like that. I think it's cute. And I'm probably going to make some more. They might be ideal Christmas presents. So, 
that is that pattern, and that's my finished object. Now let me show you what I've been working on besides that. Um, I've been working on my Barton cardigan, which is a cardigan that is cabled all the way around, and it is steeked in the front, so you knit it tubular, and then you cut it open. So here is the steeped part, and you can see from the Progress Keeper, this is where I was last week. So I have knit up almost two inches. Um, there's a side gusset on this. You have like five different charts to go go around, and the um, the gusset. Let's see if I can show it to you. Here it is. You can see where it narrows this cable section. You see it starts wide and then it's going narrow. This is the side gusset, so it's a little flared at the base and then it fits in a little bit more around the waist. And I have maybe 12 more rows of the gusset to get done. So um, it's coming along. And here is what it looks like. And it is the same pattern all the way around, except where it, of course, narrows with the gusset. So um, it's I'm getting faster at this. I'm, I was able to like watch some other YouTubers while I was knitting this. Um, there are a couple rows that are easier to get through, so um, once you kind of figure out the pattern for that row, it's it's not too hard. So I'm, I'm making progress on this. So it is coming along. Then I have my sweater. This is a cotton bamboo sweater that I'm just pretty much knitting a tube all the way up, and then I will separate when I come to the underarms and separate there for getting around the underarms, and then we'll do the neck. And this is, let me find my progress keeper. Here it is. This is one of the polymer clay progress keepers that I made. So we have a little hamburger. And so I've knitted about two inches with that. I've, I pretty much only knitted on this at knit night the other night. Um, because I don't have to think, I can talk and not worry about it. So I am striping this between two different types of yarn, and the two yarns I'm using, this is a Lana Grossa, but it is a yarn from that brand that is discontinued. So I'm only about halfway through the first skein, and I have four skeins of this. And then the solid that I'm using is a Baby Love, which is actually you can get it off of eBay. I bought it at my local yarn store, and I know she has more, so... Um, if I need to supplement this with more of this, I can. But this one, you can see I'm almost through this skein. So it doesn't have as much yardage as this one does. Um, and this is a bamboo cotton cashmere, I think. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But it's really, really soft. And it's this the fabric it's creating is just going to be very, very comfortable. It's really soft to wear. Um, I'm hoping it's not too warm. I'm just going to put, like, dropped sleeves on it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's coming along, and it's something that I can do in the car um, because I don't have a real pattern with it. It's pretty much at this point I'm just doing the knit stitch around and around and around. It's a little monotonous at this point, but when I need something mindless, it's perfect for me to work on. So I've been doing that. Then I've been working on my cozy memory blanket, and I got seven squares put in this week. So let me show you where I was. I did this square and this one and this one and this one and this one. This is one from Colors That I Dyed, and it looks pretty solid. It is fairly solid. It is technically tonal, but where I'm knitting here, it's all solids. And then there's this one which I really like the colors of. It's pinks and purples and like creams. Um, any of the variegated ones are some that I got off of eBay from Paula. Um, this is some of the yarn from my yarn advent calendar. Um, yeah, so I like it. I like this one too because it reminds me of ball colors. The yellow is looking a little neon-y in the light here, but it really isn't. So, um, yeah, so I put in, like I said, seven squares. So I am now, let me think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13 squares across and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 squares tall. I'll have to do the math. I'll put it in here how many total squares that is. But here it is. And it is hmm, probably about two feet tall by about four feet wide. So it's not, I don't know how big I'm going to finish up making this. I just keep adding on until I get sick of doing it. Um, but it will be getting taller because two feet is not big enough for a blanket at this point. Um, but it's coming along. And then I've been working on my crochet blanket and I think I've gotten one more round done of the crochet. Oops, the hook is stuck in there. This is where I was last week. You can see the little stitch marker right here. So I have knit another eight rows. I've knit from the maroon up to the brown. So I now have, I believe it's seven repeats at this point. And this is probably about three feet by three feet, maybe three and a half. It's probably a little, it's actually a little taller than it is uh, wide at this point. So it's maybe about three and a half feet tall or long by about three feet wide. And it is just going to be a lap blanket. So it, that's why it's not real wide. And looking at what yarn I've got left, some of the yarn skeins that I'm using were less yardage than others, so um, I think I'm, I'm probably only going to get one more round out, so another eight rows is about all I'm going to get on this. However, whatever I've got left, I think I'm going to put tassels on the where the points are at the top and the bottom, so I'll use some of the leftover yarns and kind of mix them together and make tassels for the end. So who knows, depending on how how far I can stretch the yarn, um, I might have this as a finished object next week. We'll see. Um, yeah. So I like it. I'm, I'm getting into it. I'm finding I can crochet a faster across the row than I could when I first got started. So I'm progressing. Just be patient with me that you that are crocheters because this is a learning process for me, although I am anxious to get started on my next crochet project, which I'm going to, I, I have a crochet book to share with you guys a little bit later on. Now, what's going on this week? There's going to be another possible two videos for you to look at this week. We have today's video, which you're watching on Saturday. Um, or at least it's that's when it's being it's come out and you can watch it is available on Saturday, which is going to be May fifth. May fifth is also the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, and I am hoping to go to that. However, they're calling for a seventy percent chance of rain, so I'm not sure if I'm going to make it or not. I'm not worried about melting in the rain. I mean, the rain part walking around and it doesn't bother me. The only thing I'm hesitant about is the place you have to park to go to the Sheep and Wool Festival is in a field. And last year it rained and they had a lot of cars stuck. And I have a little car that doesn't weigh much. I have a little Toyota Yaris. It's sort of like a Corolla, but about six inches shorter than a Corolla. So it's a squirty, tiny little car. And um, I don't really want to get stuck in the mud. So that's the only concern I have. Um, but I am hoping to go. So if I go to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, I am going to bring my blogging or vlogging camera as well as my regular camera, and I'm going to take you guys with me, which is why I'm hoping to go because there are some um, yarn dyers that are going to be there and some companies that I'm familiar with. There's going to be tons of them there. I mean, I've gone on the website and looked at all of the vendors. And there's going to be a huge amount, like there's over a hundred and some vendors that are going to be there. Um, but there's some that I've, I've made my list that if I'm able to go, there's some that I want to make sure I stop at because I'm interested in seeing their yarns or I'm familiar with their yarns. 
um, or I've bought from them before. So um, I'm interested in checking that out. And they're also going to have some cheese making demonstrations, which I think would be fun. I'd like to taste the cheese too, but um, yeah, that sounded like it would be fun. And there's also some uh, fiber demonstrations in spinning and weaving and um, needle felting and knitting and crochet and um, just a lot of things that I'd like to check out. And I mean, they offer classes that are that you have to pay for to get in and things. But these are free things that you can walk into. So I really am hoping that I can go. So a lot's going to depend on what the weather is like when I get up in the morning of whether I drive down to it or not. But if I do, there will be a video coming up with that, and that will probably come out on Tuesday if I'm able to go. So if you don't see a video figure, it must have rained pretty good. Um, but I'm also expecting my knit crate. It's due in Tuesday afternoon. So when that comes out, I will make a film because I don't want to wait and have to wait to unbox it till Saturday when I film. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm like a kid in the candy shop. There's yarn in that bag. I want to rip into it and check it out. So there will be a, a video coming up either Wednesday or Thursday, uh, more than likely Thursday, uh, about the unboxing because I get not only one box, but I get two, um, at least for the next two months. Uh, I have one box that I pay for, and that's the members only box. And then Knit Crate has graciously offered me three free months of a special sock crate that they have uh, for me to share and show to you guys and to review. So um, last, last month's was absolutely beautiful. So I'm assuming, oh, my voice squeaked. Ah, the horsiness. I've got, I sound like a 13 year old kid young man going through puberty or something. My voice is squeaky. So anyway, I'm looking forward to going through that and seeing, you know, it's like Christmas once a month when it all comes in because you just never know what you're going to get. And it's usually, you know, something really, really nice. So, um, it's exciting. So now on to our knit along that we have running over on Ravelry. Uh, we have one more week to go. It ends on May 12th. So uh, those of you who are knitting it, get it finished and get a picture of your uh, finished project in the uh, Ravelry group so that you can be entered for the giveaway. And the giveaway winner will be drawn from the finished objects and they will receive a skein of Urluru uh, Queensland yarn. It's from the Queensland collection. It's 410 yards or seven, 375 millimeters millimeters, meters, yeah, millimeters, oh, yeah, no, that much, yeah, 375 meters, it's a 100 gram ball, it is 55% cotton, 26% acrylic, and 19% polyester, um, and it is, it has a really nice halo to it, it's really soft, and it's like between a lace and a fingering weight, so I would tend to say lace, but a lot of times people combine these with the halo with another yarn as well. I know I've done that with the, something this thin. I've actually put it with another skein. Um, so you get the kind of the best of both worlds. It gives some texture to stuff. So anyway, this is the winning skein of yarn. So if you have not checked out our Ravelry group, it is Katrina Knits uh, over on uh, Ravelry. No, it is Katrina's Creek. Katrina's Creations over on Ravelry. Um, and if you want to go over and check it, the link is down below. Um, we have a chatter th thread. as It's a finished object and chatter thread. So we're all talking back and forth and we're having all kinds of fun um, showing what we're making and just talking about things that are going on in our lives and any mistakes we're making. And we're just having a wonderful time just sharing back and forth. So if you don't want to have to wait to see what some of the projects look like, uh, you can head over and take a sneak peek and take a look at it and see what they are. Uh, but we have one that's finished already, and it's really pretty. It's like a rose color. So, uh, yeah, give it a check out. And that's, again, on the Ravelry Group's Katrina's Creations. So we have that. And like I said, it will end next week. And I will be contacting the winner right after I draw from the prize on the 12th. I will contact the winner. But on May 19th, I'm going to show pictures from the 
the uh, Ravelry group of what the pictures of the finished projects all look like. And that way you guys can, if you don't get Ravelry, you'll be able to see what, what the different finished projects were. So now we're getting on to our giveaway. And if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, that's where I'm Katrina Nitz, is on Instagram or Facebook. If you follow me on either of those, you know what this yarn is. Now, I've been hinting about it for the last couple of weeks, so I'll hint just a little bit more. little guessing game. Uh, this is an independent dyer. She lives on the East Coast. Specifically, she lives in New York City. Um, Brooklyn in New York City, actually, uh, which is one of the boroughs of New York. And... Her yarn is very highly in demand, and usually when it comes up for sale, it's sold as fast as it's listed. So it is a hard-to-get yarn. Now, this one is from a few years ago. It was from a sock club. Now, if you guessed the winner, or the, the, the name of the yarn dyer as Vullenbein, you would be correct. This is the yarn that we are. I'm going to be giving away. It is on the footsie base. The color is called Yellow Dress, and this is from the October 2014 Sock Club, or Yarn Club, but it's uh, part of the Art Nouveau uh, Yarn Club that she was running at the time. The yarn itself is 80% Superwash BFL, which is Blue Face Leicester, and 20% Nylon, so you could make socks out of this if you wanted. There is approximately 400, uh, 400 yards in 100 grams, and it is a fingering sock weight. And let me get this close so you can see it. This yarn is almost, it's not, it's not as bright as it's showing up. It's kind of a goldeny school bus yellow color. It's looking, yellows look a little fluorescent when you record, um, when you try to film them. But it is, um, it's actually a little duller yellow than this. It's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a school bus gold yellow. So this is the yarn, and this is the label. You said you can tell it's older because this is her older label that she used. But, um, yeah, it's very, very soft. So in order to win this, this giveaway is going to run until December 31st, and I will announce the winner on June 2nd, and the winner will have two weeks to get in contact with me um, via my email address, and if nobody gets in contact with me, then I will draw for a winner again. I say that because the last time I did a yarn giveaway, the, the first winner never came forward, so we sent it to the second one. Uh, in order to enter this giveaway, you need to be a subscriber, so click the little red button down below. Uh, you need to leave a comment down below and give me a thumbs up. So, um, and you can leave a comment about anything, uh, really doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, if you want to get a chance to win this, so Bull and Vine is up for grabs. So I want to share the two books that I have for this week. One is called Simply Crochet, and it has 22 stylish designs for every day. It's by Robin Chuchala. I think I'm pronouncing it Chuchala or Chuchala. There's her name right there. And I marked a couple pages of some patterns that I thought were especially pretty so I could share them with you. This one is absolutely gorgeous. I'm not going to be wearing that. I don't have the figure to wear something like that, um, but it would look adorable on somebody. So I really liked that. I just thought that was gorgeous. And then, let's see, I didn't mark a whole lot, but I did mark several to show you all. There is this, like a vest, and it kind of has one of those cascade type of um, fronts to it. They also, she made the same pattern, but with sleeves somewhere. There it is. Here it is with sleeves, and on this side you can see a little bit better what it looks like on the side. So I thought those were really pretty. And then there's this shawl. 
I don't know if I'm up to something that that involved yet because I am a beginner, a beginner at crochet, but I thought that was really pretty. And then I saw this, which I really, really like. Again, it's not something that I would be able to wear, but somebody who has the figure for it, look at that. Is that beautiful or what? So again, this one is called Simply Crochet by Robin Chuchala. And then at knit night the other night, um, the yarn shop owner showed us this book and I thought it was so adorable that I, I checked out our library, had a copy of it. So I brought it to be able to show you guys. It's by Nikki Epstein who puts out a lot of, um, knitting books and she did a lot of the Barbie series. There was a video a long, long time ago, one of my first videos that I did um, called It's the Little Things, and I showed some Barbie clothes that I had knitted. I used some of the patterns that were Nancy Epstein's. So um, it's called Knit a Square, Create a Cuddly Creature. Now here's the thing that's interesting. You literally are knitting a square. It's all in the way you fold it. So like here is a sheep. You, fold, you knit it like this, and then you knit some of the little body parts like the ears, and you end up with a little sheep. So I thought this was so interesting because, you know, you don't have to do all the fancy knitting um, to do this. You know, like here's a square, and here's what it turns into, a turtle. I mean, how cute. So there's a whole bunch of them that are in here, and we were just kind of drooling our way through them the other night at Knit Night. So, um, like, yeah, here's a frog. And it's, again, if you can knit a, a dishcloth, you could do this. So I just might have to check this one out. Here's one. Um, it's a white, just a white square, and then you do the tail, and you end up with a bird. So I thought this was really a neat idea. So, yeah, it's called From Flat to Fabulous, a step-by-step -step guide. So again, that is Nikki. I think I said Nancy a few minutes ago. It is Nikki Epstein. And it is knit a square, create a cuddly creature. So, and here's the back where there's a raccoon. So, those are my two books to share with you all. And the sales for the week that I thought I would share, we have uh, Lion Brand Yarn, which is Orchard Yarn and Thread Company. Um, if you look in the clip at the links down below. Um, they are having a 20% off of their Mandela baby yarn. Um, it, it, Mandela, it's a, it's a gradient yarn. It's like different, all different colors, but they're like baby colors, but you could use them for something other than baby. I kind of was scanning them out. Um, they are only $6 and 39 cents. So it's 20% off and it's a 150 gram ball. And these are like like rolled up cakes. They kind of remind me of a small version of a carrot cake or the, you know, the other yarn that Car or that uh, Lion Brand has called the Mandela. It's the same thing. It's just in more pastels. Um, there's 590 yards in a skein. So uh, anyway, yeah, it's, it starts at $6 and 39 cents. So the, dis the, the link to all of those are down below. If you want to click them out and check them out. Knit Picks is offering 20% off of their uh, interchangeable needle tips, and they're offering up to 25% off of their yarn value packs, um, which are like gradient sets or groups of yarn that they've put together. Some of them are a little more pricey, but some of them are like under $20 for a few skeins of yarn. Um, and they also are offering 20% off of their gloss yarns. And apparently they sell gloss yarns in robings and everything else. So um, I hadn't heard of that one before. So um, that's one to check out. And then Craftsy actually contacted me and they are offering something. They have a thing called Craftsy Unlimited. So I checked it out to find out what is Craftsy Unlimited. Okay, Craftsy has all different, not just knitting and crochet. They have cooking, they have cake baking, they have painting, they have scrapbooking, quilting, sewing, all kinds of other, anything craft related or 
some cooking related. So Craftsy Unlimited is for $14.99 a month or $120 a year, you get to you get access to as many classes as you want. So you could like watch thousands of them for $14.99 a month, which is a pretty good deal. I've never taken a class through Craftsy, but everyone that I've talked to who has has been very impressed. I have seen some of the teachers who do some of those classes. I've seen them in other you know, things on YouTube, and I've been really impressed. So uh, anyway, the link to that is down below. And there is like a free one-week trial if you want to try Craftsy Unlimited before you sign up for it. So those are the three things that are out there. I'll also put the links to the Knit Crate if you're interested in subscription. Uh, box they do offer a percentage off of your first month's subscription box. So that is it for this week. Again, watch for another video for sure, possibly a second one, all depending on what happens with the weather. So let's hope it. Let's hope that the weathermen are wrong, which they usually are. So I stand. I might stand a pretty good chance. That's seventy percent chance of rain could be totally iffy and totally wrong. So all depends on what it looks like when I get up in the morning, whether I will be going to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. But if I do, I will have a video for you guys up later this week as well. So otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful week. And don't forget to enter our giveaway. Again, give me a thumbs up. Uh, click the little red subscription box or subscription button down below and leave a comment. So I will see you next week. Thanks again for watching.